guys, what is up, Davis here. So in this video, I'm going to be showing you guys how to reflow an Xbox 360 fat. And in the part 2 video, I'm going to be showing you guys how to reflow an Xbox 360 slim. So before I get into everything that I'm going to show you, you know, what you need and everything you need to do this, let's take a look at these other videos. And let me show you what you're not supposed to do when reflowing. Going to be doing this about a fifth length away from the board. Here Rick is actually heating it. So, you know, you can see it's almost like resetting the transistors within the processors shape. themselves. This no, that's on fire! Yeah, I told you! Oh, <laughs> God! It's on fire! <laughs> Holy <laughs> shit! Okay, what I got here is a, uh, a bottle of map gas. Whew. Making cracking noises. Whew. Yo guys, so before I show you everything, I just want to show you guys my setup and how everything is working through here and how I do stuff. So obviously I have my soldering station, my soldering station, soldering iron. Uh, this is a, um, it's a bottom heater. It's just, it's just a preheater. That's it. Uh, it's not a, exactly a reflow station. And then this is my, my reflow station. It has the top heat and then it has the bottom heat and it's all controlled through here. It has different profiles. So when you, when you start a profile, it'll tell the top heat what to do um, pretty much. So say if we have, um, you know, you can add up to like nine, eight or nine settings, I think. So say the first one is 190 degrees or something like that, or 190 Celsius, uh, it'll sit for like 45 seconds or something, and then it'll move up to the next setting and then it'll go to 200 degrees and then sit for 45 or 50 seconds you know you can change anything you want um, you know for how long it sits and we'll get to that a little bit later um, but I will have my profiles for this con for this uh, reflow station in the description um, so you'll be able to use those settings with pretty much any machine but you'll need to you know depending on what much what machine you get you'll have to you know do trial and error pretty much to see what works and what doesn't work and what's too hot or you know what's just right you know you're gonna have to test it out you're not gonna get it perfect on the first try um, and honestly if you're gonna attempt anything in this video then I would recommend you to you know you know do your best and I don't take any responsibility for your mess ups so let's talk about these uh, rework stations uh, the black one is the one that I use all the time. Um, it's used for reballing and reflowing and uh, the control panel. Um, it is really easy to use pretty much. You have your you have your bottom temperature, your top controller, and the top controls the uh, top airflow. Now this machine is not uh, being sold anywhere. They don't make it anymore. Um, but you can buy a machine exactly like it. It's called the IR6000. The only difference from that and from this, uh, mine has airflow. So if you were to stick your hand under this while it's on, you would feel the airflow coming out just like a heat gun would be. Um, but for the uh, HR6000, it doesn't have actual airflow. It has a, a top heater, kind of like these bottom heaters. And it's really small. It's like that big or so. Um, and it's right here and that's used for the top heat and it you know I've never used a machine like that um, But I have friends that have one and they've done reballs perfectly fine and reflows perfectly fine um, So that would be your best bet if you're trying to get a, mach a machine exactly like mine There are a ton of other good ones that you can use um, I'll link a few in the description and I'll also have my profiles for this machine in the description as well. Um, you'll have to set it manually, um, but it, they should work for any other machine. You're gonna need to, you know, do trial and error pretty much for your machine, because you will need to get the, you know, the temp, the temperature is right, and, you know, you're you're just gonna have to do trial and error to make sure everything is perfect for when you're reflowing. So this machine is about uh, 500, 600 bucks. Um, I know if you were to get the IR6000, which is the one I was talking about earlier, which they still make that one, if you were to get that one, then you can also buy 
the uh, top heat separately and install it and you know it's uh, just a few screws back there to you know remove it and install the new one uh, then the machine will be exactly like mine and you know you'll have the same results as I do since it's exactly the same um, but anyway let's go and move on to this one uh, this one was my first ever re my reflow top heat or bottom heat whatever you want to call it this is what I used when I first started reflowing and you know it did fine but the only bad thing was that I had to make my own clamping system for my heat gun um, now I use I have a rework station right here and it has my soldering iron it has the heat gun and then it also has the um, this little pump right here so let's say we have a GPU and say this is the console you just got done reflowing it or you know it's at reflow point at the moment and you can literally move the chip to take it off what you would do is you would take this and this is a like a it's like a pump um, I can't remember the exact name of it but it's used to it's a suction cup and it removes the GPU so what you would do on your station you would turn that on and then this has airflow pulling or sucking so then you would hold this little button right or this uh, hole to cover it up and then you can pick the GPU up with it like that and then you would you know take it off of the board that would only be used for like reballing though say if you want to you know reball the console you would have to remove the GPU and this one is just a bad GPU it's no good anyway uh, just for demonstration so then what you would need for this is you would need a clamping system and you would need it to hold the uh, the hot the hot air in place and you can look up a heat gun clamping system the link will be in the description for that uh, but you can get that and use this as the bottom heater and use the profile settings for that machine in the description that I have um, they'll be in there so this blue one is originally it has a label right here and it's yellow and I didn't like it so I took it off um, but I do have the user manual which is weird because I usually throw these away but it's called the T8280 so you can look that up I'll have a link to it in the description and you can find it there so let's talk about what these big black things are so these are called jigs now these are made out of um, I'm not really sure what they're made out of, but they're they're really solid, so it'll be hard to bend these, and that's what you want. You want a completely flat thing. So basically, what this does is you would put your your Xbox motherboard on there, and you would screw it in to hold it flat. And the reason why you do this is because when you're reflowing, um, it gets hot, and if you don't have anything to hold it in place from you know when it gets hot then it's gonna warp and the board is gonna bend and you just don't want that to happen so the links of these two will be in the description and they're also you can also get them for uh, ps4s and Xbox ones I think so the next thing that you're gonna need is you're gonna need this type of tape it's aluminum tape for um, you would put this around the, the GPU or XE GPU for slims and I'll post a picture here of what it would look like installed and everything and that mainly protects the components and um, it also keeps the heat in so um, you know it makes it easier for the reflow to be done so now let's talk about flux so these two right here are pretty good um, the Kingbow is personally what I use um, this stuff you can't go wrong with buying it. it it's not gonna be a waste of money and it also it doesn't really have a smell to it it has a little bit of smell but it's like it's not bad at all um, and I would honestly say this is the best flux that you can buy um, it is a little bit more expensive than Amtec um, other people will disagree and they'll say Amtec is the way to go and that it is better than um, than Kingbow or anything else um, but as you can see, there's a there's a whole there's a the color is totally different, um, and this does have a smell to it. So I know you can get both of them for pretty cheap online, and I'll have links to these in the description as well. Um, and I would also recommend to get a uh, I, this is a glass syringe, but I would recommend you to get some type of syringe because you'll be needing to um, you know pretty much inject the flux under the GPU. 
to, you know, to do the reflow. Um, I know some flux you can get, it has a syringe, um, you know, already done, and you can just put the syringe tip on it, and it's really easy. This one is a glass syringe, it was like 23 bucks for this, and uh, you will have to put everything in it yourself to, um, you can use like a paintbrush or something to, you know, scoop the flux in there and then push it down, and but this, the glass syringe is really good and you can have a lot of it in there at once. So let's talk about these now. These are the thermometers. Um, and then you also have a thermal couple, which is this little thing right here. And um, mine, what, what I use is I have this, um, this little adapter. Say hi, Mackenzie. Uh, this little adapter, and this is basically an arm. And um, I'll be showing before I do the reflow of how, I, how you can install this without having the arm. But this basically, um, you know bends and you can set it directly to the, the GPU and you don't have to tape it down Which is what you're gonna have to do with just a regular one of these So this makes everything pretty much easier so you don't have to keep removing it and retaping it every single time so these two are the um, They're pretty good. Uh, I've used both of these for a really long time now uh, Both will be in a link in the description um, the, This one is the one I use right now um, it, they both work exactly the same way. You plug in the, the probe at the top. This one you plug in right here. Um, but you just turn it on and it'll display the temperature. Uh, and in this case, we're going to be working in Celsius. So make sure it says a C right there and you can change it to Fahrenheit as well. Another thing I would recommend is um, MX2 Thermal Compound. Um, or you could get something a little bit better, which is MX4. This one is really dirty because I use it a lot. Uh, but MX4, it, e it spreads easier than MX2 does, but honestly, they work the same. This is cheaper than MX4. Um, or I mean, or you could use Arctic Silver. There's a ton of things that you could use that are good. Um, but this is actually, the, well, the MX4 is actually the number one rated uh, thermal paste at the moment. Uh, last time I checked, honestly, but um, yeah, MX2 is very good as well, so I would recommend that, and so yeah, and then another good thing, you know, you would have to get some good solder for, um, I mean, if you're doing RGH installs or reballing, um, you're going to need to have good solder, um, but this is the information about my solder, I'll have a link to this or something similar to this in the description um, and another thing you're gonna need is goo gone uh, this is what you're gonna need to clean up your mess after you're done like clean up flux uh, this is what I use to clean up flux for my RGH installs and then also for um, for re reflowing and stuff like that uh, after you remove the tape, there's going to be flux residue on the board and you're going to need to clean that up because it's not going to look good if you leave it there. So before you do your reflow and try to repair a console that is actually worth fixing, I wouldn't recommend that for your first reflow. I would recommend you to find a parts board, um, something that's not fixable, um, and try to do the reflow with that. Uh, I have a bunch here that you know they're not fixable like this one is totally fucked um, a lot of these are just totally messed up but you can try and do the reflow with one of these boards you know just mess around with it do trial and error with it see how it goes for your first reflow but don't don't do your console that you're trying to fix that's actually worth fixing until you got it down right all right guys so this console is the one that we're going to be reflowing in this video it is a Falcon and it is JTAGable, so hopefully, we can fix it in this video. So, this console it's JTAGable. Um, I tested it a while back and it had 0020, so a reflow would fix that. Um, well, for in this case, it would. Um, but as you can see here, these capacitors right here. They are bad and they need to be replaced because currently it has 0001. Um, so I think once I replace these capacitors, uh, it's one, two, three, four, five, maybe five. 
um, once I replace them, then it'll be back to the normal state and it'll be turning on and then we'll have zero, zero, two, zero. All right, so as you can see, McKinsey fixed the 0001 issue, and we replaced all these capacitors right here. So the console is, the red, the power brick is not red anymore, it's staying green. Uh, originally it, was, it would go red, and then it would turn off, and the console would, um, it wouldn't do anything else. So um, right now we're gonna test the error code to show you uh, what it is at right now. So. You're gonna hold the eject or sync button, and then you're gonna here, hold that, babe. You're gonna hold the sync button, and then you're gonna press the eject button four times. So that's zero, zero, two, zero. So that's what we're gonna be fixing in this video. So my next recommendation, uh, before you actually do the reflow, um, you don't want to clean this thermal paste off on the fat. Uh, it's it's fine to do it on the slim. But um, if you use like goof off or you know something similar to that, it's gonna put moisture in the actual chip, and when you reflow it and it gets hot, it's gonna cause popcorning, and you do not want that because. But you can try to take a Q-tip and try to get the thermal paste off. If it does come off like that one did, then it's fine. But you don't want to add any cleaning supplies or anything to this to get it off before the reflow. Um, you can just wait till after the reflow is done to take this thermal paste off. Um, so I'm going to just clean it off after the reflow is done. Another thing to remember is when you're cleaning this off, you don't want to get the thermal paste on the side of the chip to go under underneath of it. So as you can see, there's a little bit there. Um, so we can just take my tweezers. Because when it goes underneath the chip, it's not going to be good and the reflow might mess up. And you just really don't want that stuff to go underneath the chip. So that's the same for the slim. When you're cleaning the slim off, be sure to um, not let any other thermal paste go underneath the chip. Alright guys, so now we're going to be putting it on the jig. And basically you're going to get your console. And you're going to line it up with the screws. All right, so now what you're gonna do is you're gonna get your tape and you're gonna rip a piece off kind of long. Rip that off. And now you're gonna bend it in the fours. So you're gonna get it like this. Meet it to the end and bend it out. 
and then bend it one more time like that. And now you're gonna rip it and open this one up and rip that rip that one. So then you have four of these pieces. And then um see this one you're gonna wanna rip this off like that. And we're gonna put this on. So this is how you're gonna mount your, your probe for your uh your little thermo meter. So you're gonna I'm gonna unravel this. And I'm not too sure if this one actually works, so I'm just I'm gonna add both of mine on there at the same time, uh, just to be sure that you know one of them works. You'll see that it has some issues right here, but I'm showing you guys this to show you how to put it on correctly. So it's gonna go over here like this, and it's gonna touch the chip like right there. So we're gonna need this piece of tape. You can use a flat, a flatter piece of tape, like this one's all kind of screwed up. So you can cut like a, a better one off if you want. <clears throat> I'm just going to use this one and this will hold it down. I'm going to put it like that. And then you're going to take your wire and you're going to put it underneath of there and touch it towards the chip. You're going to want to touch the chip. And you don't want to get any of this tape on the glue yet because we're going to be removing that epoxy right there. So make sure that's down all the way. And now we're going to get the other pieces of tape. We're going to take them off. And you want to get it as close as the glue as possible. Okay, and you kind of want to pull this tape away from these capacitors back here. Just make sure it's not touching them. And same for this. You don't want any airflow on those capacitors. So, that should be good enough. Alright guys, so let's go ahead and turn this on and we're going to talk about the profiles. Get this out of the way. And my phone charger out of the way. So basically, I'm gonna talk to you guys about how to use this. I'm gonna have all of the profile, the like information in the description about it. Um, it's not on right now exactly, so it's not this wire is not gonna get hurt or anything. Um, so we have about nine different profiles, and this is your profile right here. Um, it tells you what number you're on. Okay, so <clears throat> for our first preheating temperature, you're going to want to set this to, um, you want to set that to, I think it was two, 255 for fats, and you're not going to need to move it or anything, you can just leave it on that, so we're going to click set, keep holding it, and then it set it. So R1 is our first uh, actual setting. Uh, this is rate, I'm pretty sure. Uh, and the 1.50 means how fast the heat rises or you know, as how fast it heats up. So if you were to lower that, if you were to lower 150, then it would take longer for it to get to the, to the right temperature. So then we would click set and then um, 155 is our temperature. Um, I guess that means level. I'm not really sure um, on that, but I know this is your heat, your the actual temperature for your top heat, what you're wanting it to go to, and it keeps kicking me off. And then uh, the, this is dwell. This means dwell. Uh, so D1, and I set it to 9999 because I can preheat it for 
that that long of a time. Um, I only preheat it for about 30 minutes, um, sometimes more for fats because over time fats collect a lot of moisture. So it's really important to preheat them, you know, for as long as you can. Um, I, you should be fine with doing it for 30 minutes um, or 45 minutes and then you know then you can start your reflow so then our next profile um, number eight is actually another preheating profile for um, for the for slims and basically it's uh, the dwell or the rate this one it actually doesn't the top heat is not actually on so that's why it says sleep and then it's zero for the temperature and then it's running for this long so and that's in seconds that was the whole profile but anyway that's not important right now this one is our, our actually reflow profile number nine now you can set it to however you want it um, but our first one it, the rate goes up to 2.50 because um, I will show you guys how to how to do it properly uh, before we get into it but this is how fast our rate is going up um, <clears throat> so we're gonna click set and then this is our temperature for the first one so that's 180 Celsius and then it's gonna sit for 45 seconds and then it's gonna rise a lot slower so 0 0.45 and that's what you want and then our temperature is going to be 190, 35 seconds, R3, 40, 0.45, uh, uh, the rate, 200 Celsius for 35, 0 0.45 R4. <clears throat> As you can see, it's always changing when I go up. So there's really only three things that you have to change with uh, one setting for a profile. Um, so then 210 Celsius, D4 for 55 seconds, R5, um, 0 0.45, 225 Celsius, and now, now we will be getting to the actual uh, reflow point, and that's going to sit for 40 seconds, and then this is our R6, so 0 0.45, uh, 228. And at this point, we will definitely be at the reflow point. Um, that's going to set for 25 seconds. And at R7, um, I have like I think two more settings after, or two more settings including this one. And that is for if the just just to be sure that the temperature or the solder has melted underneath. Um, I just added this extra option just in case. Uh, you know it's it's being stubborn and it doesn't actually melt so all of those profiles are going to be in the description um, it's probably going to be the most complicating thing about this uh, this whole tutorial but um, you'll just have to mess with it like I did like these settings that I have on here I learned myself these were not on you know you won't really find them anywhere um, it's from it's from me learning uh, I taught myself how to use this machine because there weren't really any good tutorials at the time when I was learning about it. So um, I, I just hope this video helps you guys a lot, um, considering, considering there was no good videos for me at that time. But anyway guys, let's get into the reflow part and we're going to remo remove the epoxy now. So I have my camera here, uh, I'm going to be showing you guys the GPU and the first thing we're going to do is we are going to turn this to number seven, which is our fat preheating profile. Now yours may be different. We're gonna click start. And we're going to turn this to two, 255, which I already did. So you would just change it, you know, however, and then hold set until it goes back. So then we can turn this on. And we can see the actual temperature of it rising so this thermocouple does not work for um, it just does not work I don't know what exactly is wrong with it I'm gonna try it on this side now see if we have a temperature and that side doesn't even work so 
Um, but I was just demonstrating to show you guys where to put it because I know a few of you guys are not going to have this little arm that I have. So I'm just going to add this one in there right now and to show you guys how I set this, this little arm up. So let me show you how I got this arm set up. This arm right here, basically when you when you have it right through here, you just, you just bend it and you put it right towards the GPU right there. And you don't want it to have any pressure towards the GPU because when it gets to reflow point, this arm will push the GPU off the you know off the pads, and that's that's just a nightmare. So you don't want that to happen. Um, so we're going to be removing the epoxy. Uh, it's currently at 85 degrees. So when it gets to 100 degrees, that's when we can remove the epoxy. And you're going to need some type of tweezers, which. Um, these would be fine, uh, or you could use these tweezers like this. I'm going to be using these. So we're at 100 degrees right now, Celsius. And as you can see, these little glues, they just come right off really easily. And you don't want to wait too long because if you do, they'll start breaking off just like that one did. And when you get it, when it gets too hot, it's gonna break off, and it's gonna be even harder to remove because it's just gonna keep breaking off in the little pieces. So you want to get it right at 100 degrees. All right, so they're all removed now, and currently we are at. Uh, 133 Celsius, actually it's moving up, 136. So I'm gonna adjust that a little bit. And we're gonna let this preheat for uh, about 30 minutes. And then we're gonna put the flux underneath the chip and then we're gonna start our reflow. So something I forgot to mention is when you're preheating this for 30 minutes uh, this is only for fats you're going to need to bring this over and um, you're going to need to adjust the nozzle a little bit um, i forgot to mention this but you want to adjust it before you actually start the uh before it actually gets all hot and everything because like I just showed you, you're going to burn your fingers and stuff, and it's just going to be not fun. So you're just going to place that over the chip like that. And this is going to be our preheating. Uh, this is not reflowing yet, just preheating. You got to be really careful not to burn yourself. And that should be good right there. So now we're gonna let that preheat. And let me show you guys those balls under there real quick. Yeah, you can see them a little bit under there. Those are actually what we're gonna be reflowing, guys. See those little balls? We're only a few minutes in the preheating, but I got a good setup here to show you guys those balls underneath. Uh, we're about we're about 27 minutes in the preheating. Um, or actually, uh, it's 27 minutes left of preheating, but I got a good setup so I can show you guys the balls and everything. Um, so go ahead and we're gonna let this preheat, and then we're gonna apply the flux once the time is up, and then we're gonna start the reflow. Okay guys, so it's been about 30 minutes now, and I got a pretty good angle right here, so I'm gonna lift this up now, and I'm gonna move it around and we're going to put our flux underneath of it, so we're going to be using our syringe. I'm going to move this out of the way for the moment. Now we can take our syringe and put it underneath it here. Be sure not to like mess up any of the traces or anything, uh, because you can cut the board with the syringe and your tweezers and stuff like that so just be careful don't put too much pressure on on the board you just want to spread it around like that go to each side and it's okay if you get it on top of the chip don't worry
Okay. So now what we're gonna do is we are going to start, we're gonna go to number nine. As I, we're gonna stop the process and then we're gonna go to number nine. Uh, like I showed you guys in the profile, this is our gonna this is our reflow profile. The number seven was our preheating and number nine is our reflow. So we're gonna press start. And we're gonna wait till this heats up. As you can see we're on number nine right here. We're gonna wait till this heats up to about 180, that's where it's gonna be at. And then we can move the, uh, the, the actual top heat back over top of the GPU. And as you can see, it's going pretty fast and that's because the, uh, the rate is set at a really high rate. So that's why it's moving up really fast. So now we're gonna move this back over on top of our GPU after we applied the flux. And also you can tighten this so it won't move all the way down. So when you tighten it, you can see it moving up a little bit. So um, some, some stations may have that, some may not. I'm not really sure, but I know mine has that. So that is about where you want it. So uh, we're gonna move this back over here now. just like that and as I said before you don't want it to be putting pressure on the actual uh, GPU because if it is then when it's at reflow point it's gonna push the GPU and you don't want that Currently it's at 202C. Currently it's at 108C. Two hundred fourteen C, and the reflow point is about two hundred and twenty-five C. Um, it's originally two hundred and eighteen C for leaded solder to melt, but all of the saws don't all of the all of the solder balls don't melt right at two hundred eighteen C. It's usually about two hundred and twenty-five or two hundred twenty-three, somewhere around there. Hold this, babe. Just show them that. Right there. Get a little bit closer to the screen. Yeah, like that. So we're almost at reflow point, guys. Now, as you can see, the the uh, chip. You should be able to see those solder balls underneath the chip. Um, they're going to be melting. 
they're kind of like a gold right now that's what they look like so we're at 224 so we are at reflow point so if i were to take my tweezers and lightly touch the chip it should be moving So guys, we're at reflow point right now, so we're gonna stop it. So that means all the solder balls underneath the chip are melted at the moment. And it's gonna stop the process and it's cooling down right now. And as you can see, the temperature is dropping. And then you'll be able to see those balls come back, as you can see right now. So once you see them come back like that, that means the, the ship is actually lifting back up and none of the solder balls are melted anymore. So we have a good reflow currently. So I'm gonna remove my probe and so as you can see those, those shiny balls underneath, looks really good. And yeah, you can take that off, show them me now. I'm gonna move this over here. Get that out of the way. We're gonna lift this up, move that out of the way, move this light out the way, and I'm gonna take my, can you move your phone right there? I'm gonna take these tweezers, or these are not tweezers, these are pliers. We're gonna take those, and I'm gonna grab this right here. We're gonna lift that off of here. And now, <clears throat> currently, what we're gonna do is we are going to, clean up the, the solder or in, in the flux, not the solder, the flux, we're going to clean up all that and we're also going to clean the thermal paste. So, right now, here you can zoom out a little bit or hold it back, there you go. So we're going to take this off and it's still hot right now so be careful. Um, and then obviously you would remove this tape and then you would remove your probe, which I already removed mine because mine wasn't working. Let me throw that away, grab it right there. <clears throat> so we're gonna leave it on the actual jig for the moment and we're gonna get, is the towels over there? All right, so we're gonna take a bounty towel like this, a little towel. And we're gonna clean up all of this, this thermal paste and all of this flux. So I have this right here. Look at this. This is a little, uh, it's actually the King Bow flux uh, top. So we're gonna take it and put some of this in there like this. And we're gonna take our Q-tip. And we're gonna put it on this thermal paste. You need to get it while it's hot because then it will be a lot easier to clean off. Get the other side as well. Okay. And we're gonna clean up that thermal paste still. Let's get the rest of that. Is it focusing good? Clean this off. Let's 
Alright, I'm gonna turn my machine off all the way too so it'll stop making that loud noise. So as you can see, it's cleaning up really good. Probably not gonna be able to get every single thing because thermal paste likes to get in between those little micro chips right there. But I mean, I'm just gonna get it as good as I can. And then also while this flux is still hot, we're gonna take a little bit more of the goo gone on our Q-tip and we're gonna wipe it around there. Because if the flux is not hot, then it's gonna be a lot harder to clean off of there and it's just gonna be a lot more time consuming. So as you can see, it's coming off really easily. Get it all good around there. Now we can take our little towel Get all that flux and goo gone off. Just like that. And what we're gonna do now is it looks it looks pretty good. It could be a little bit better. Get a little bit of that in there. And around there again. And that's goof off or goof on. Get some on this. Clean that up. And now we're gonna take our microfiber cloth towel and we're gonna get all that stuff off of there. And that'll make it look really good, as you can see. And clean this up. Clean that. So our other camera died, but that's okay because we got mostly everything we needed. Um, so now you can see that the GPU is really clean. Came out better than I thought it would. And the CPU is clean. So now what we're going to do is we're actually going to let it cool down. And you don't want to turn it on yet or put any thermal paste on it yet before, you know, before it's actually cooled down. So... We're just going to let it cool down for a minute and then we're going to put the thermal paste on it and then put the heat sink back on it and then we're going to fire this baby up and see if she works. So guys, right now it's 0001. Now, um, as I as the video that I showed you guys last night, the console had 0001 as well and we replaced these capacitors. Uh, this one looks bad right now, but the other ones look fine. So I'm going to see if, I, if these two capacitors are here. This one kind of looks weird as well. Uh, I'm going to replace both of them and see if the console boots. I do not think it is the reflow, but um, let's go ahead and try it. Hey guys, so this is the console that we were working on. Uh, so let me go over some things uh, and tell you guys how I fixed this. Now, I want to be completely honest with you guys. The reflow did not fix this console, and I'm going to explain why. Uh, so this is the GPU, and I had to replace the GPU for this console because uh, when I reflowed the console, there was an actual manufacturing issue with the solder balls on the GPU and when it got to the reflow point it caused that bridge up there as you can see right there it causes the bridge in the solder points and it gave a 0022 error and that's what happened when I turned the console on so how I fixed that was to replace the, X, the, the GPU now I'm going to tell you right now I've done this a lot of times and the reflow process I've done it exactly the same way as I showed you guys before in the video and if you follow it and you do it exactly as the way I do it then you shouldn't have any problems uh, but like I said you're gonna have you, you may run into issues um, with reflowing like I have in the past because I didn't know what I was doing at first um, so I hope this video does help you guys um, you know because I didn't have this type of you know information when I was starting reflowing because nobody goes into detail about anything they just say hey here's how to reflow and they don't tell you like what what the profile setting was what the temperature was or anything um, so this this video does have a lot of good information in it now um, the console does work now uh, but at the start of the video I showed you guys that the console had 0001 now um, I'm gonna explain why uh, after the reflow it didn't fix it so um, all these capacitors there's a few capacitors right here um, those were what was bad I don't know why there were so many bad on this console but there's also two under this heatsink there's one right there and then one right beside this red coil under here I can't really show you 
but those two were also bad and i replaced all of these actually my girlfriend replaced all of these because i was helping her and um i showed i showed her how to do it and uh i i totally forgot to look under here um for the bad capacitors so uh when i after the reflow was done i looked and that's what the issue was because you know it was hiding from me pretty much i couldn't see it um so because i totally forgot that there was capacitors under there so after i replaced that it then it, it went to it, it took away that error code obviously so we fixed that error code the 0001 so um, that is some tips for you guys if you have a 0001 console check those capacitors that i just explained um, but then after after the reflow we booted it up and then it had 0022 which was that gpu issue that we talked about so that's what caused it and um, honestly, I don't have this issue a lot. Uh, I'm pretty successful when it comes to reflows, um, but it's just something to, you know, look out for, um, you know, something that can happen when you're reflowing. So I did fix this console and I, re I replaced the GPU by, um, you know, reballing it. Uh, there, I had one that was already pre-balled, which you can get on eBay or, you know, like AliExpress or something like that. I'll just make sure it has uh, lead free or lead it solder and not lead free solder uh, then the reflow or when you put the chip back on the reflow point will be uh, about 180 degrees or about 190 degrees and that should you know reflow the chip back onto the board um, which I don't have a video on that so I can't show you guys at the moment uh, hopefully I'll make one and show you guys uh, how to reball later on um, but I'm gonna show you guys that it works uh, a lot of work has went into this console and I'm very sorry that you know I wanted to show you guys that it did work because uh, I do the reflow process exactly as I showed it before in the video and I'm just I'm really shocked that it didn't work and you know like I said it was a manufacturing issue so uh, this console does boot up and it is jtagable so hopefully you get some jtagable console jtagable consoles when you uh, when you reflow so as you can see, it's on 7371, so it's jtagable. Um, the other thing that I forgot to mention when I was doing this console, um, well, somebody is probably gonna be like, yo, you switched the motherboard because the capacitors are different colors. Um, as I said before, I was being honest and the reflow did not fix this console. It, it needed a replacement or a GP replacement because of that bridge right there. Um, so, I mean, honestly, like, I can't really show any proof. The only thing that I can show is that board number right there on the motherboard. Right there. And I'm sure you could see it from somewhere like in one of the uh, in the video where I was like replacing the thermal paste or something. I'm sure it's somewhere in the video. You just have to look for it. Um, but the other thing I can show proof of is uh, these are the bad capacitors that I replaced. As you can see, they're they're really ugly looking and they just don't look good uh, because of their bulging with that's what makes them bad um, they've exploded pretty much uh, I replaced it with these with I replaced those capacitors with these capacitors and um, after I booted it up I thought maybe these were the ones causing the 0022 to come up um, because I was reading about it and that's they say it could be a bad capacitor um, but that was not the case and it did not fix it so then that's what told me that it was the GPU causing the problem. So, and sure enough, when I took it off, that solder ball was bridged. And that's not caused by something that I did. It's caused by um, like a manufacturing issue. And when it got to reflow point, that's what happened. It bridged. And, you know, that's just something that, you know, I can't really prevent, honestly. Like, the only way to, to fix that would be to reball it or to. Um, you know replace the GPU like I did like I honestly think this GPU is fine I think if I were to reball this GPU and put it on a different console that it would work um, maybe that's another video that I could do um, but that's the proof that I have for this console to show you that I haven't switched it I should have wrote something right here uh, to show you guys like you know it is it is that console and you know make sure I didn't just show you guys proof I didn't switch it but just take my word for it and you know I, I was being honest about the reflow that it didn't fix it or anything so um 
but as long as you follow the video like I do, then you shouldn't have this problem. Like, this is like a freak thing to happen, because uh, I never have this issue happen where the solder balls bridge or anything. So, that was just a really weird thing to happen. But anyway, guys, I hope you learned from this video, and I hope you use your knowledge to, uh, you know, do more consoles and improve, and I hope you have great success doing this. Um, the reflow, reflow process will work for you. Um, you just have to get the temperatures right and you know everything set up correctly. It's gonna take a few tries probably um, But it's like I mentioned before when I did this uh, I didn't have any information about you know doing it. I had to learn from my mistakes pretty much to get everything correct so um, Just be sure to check out the part two for me reflowing a slim console and Then we can go from there and you guys can learn how to reflow a slim console as well so you guys have a great day and I'll see you guys later.